Hi there, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I have a tutorial on how to crochet this very funky granny square boho denim style round bag. It's a round shaped bag and it's just using traditional granny squares and then a round motif for the bottom of the bag. I will show you how to do this bag from start to finish. It does have a lining and originally I was going to do this just in one tutorial but I always underestimate how much work this is so I'm going to do it in two parts. So in part one I'll show you how to make the bag proper and we're going to cut out the lining because we'll be using the pattern pieces of the bag as a template for the lining. So we'll cut out the lining and then in part two we will make the lining, put it in and I just have some fabric in here to bulk it up and then we will make the straps here and I'll show you how to put those on and then if you like you can do some beading for the tassels and yeah it's so much fun. So this is part one and I'm excited to show you how to make this really really fun and funky bag. Now for this project I'm using a cotton yarn and I do recommend using a cotton yarn or maybe a linen yarn. You want yarn that doesn't stretch like some of the acrylic and synthetic yarns can. So this is the Lily brand Sugar and Cream. It's a number four medium weight yarn. And I had these in my stash and I thought this would be a really fun color combination, but you can use any combination you like. This here is Bright Navy. And this is a two and a half ounce ball or 70 grams. This is the same size and this is called indigo. So this is really like a navy blue. This is more of a dark denim color. And then I have a four ounce ball and this one is called blue jean. And so that's four ounces and 113 grams. You'll use a lot of this yarn, but not all of it. Um, but you could make it all in one color if you like or any color combination you like. But I do recommend a cotton yarn for this. And then you'll need some scissors, darning needle. I'm using a three and a half millimeter crochet hook. And I think that's a 4H. It's smaller than what's recommended for this yarn size, but I want the squares to be very tight because it's going to be a bag and a purse. And then you'll need some fabric for your lining. I'm just using some denim fabric. I do recommend a sturdy fabric like denim or canvas. Here's a list of some additional supplies that you'll need as well. And I'll show you how to make the lining for this bag. I do have other tutorials on how to create linings either hand sewn or with a sewing machine. I'm going to be using a sewing machine for this one. So I'll have links for all of that in the blog posts in the description box below. And so that's all you need. Let's get started. Now to make this bag you are going to need one round granny square motif and 10 regular granny squares. Now I'm not going to show how to crochet these step by step. I do have tutorials for both of these and this here is what I call a compact granny square and a link for that will be in the written blog post in the description box below and I'll put a link to the video up into the top corner here and essentially what this is it's a traditional granny square that has no chain in between the clusters and just a chain one in each corner and for the reason for that is to make it a nice tight compact granny square. So all those links will be in the blog post. And if you're using the same color scheme I am, I use bright navy for the center, the blue jean for the second round, indigo for the third round, and blue jean for the fourth round. So four rounds all together, and then 10 squares. I also have a tutorial for a round motif, and that will also be in the blog post. Again, that will be in the description box below. 
and and you'll do rounds one to four exactly as that pattern and then I will show you in this tutorial how to do the final round in the next segment and the colors I'm using here are the uh, bright navy bright navy then blue jean bright navy blue jean and then indigo so next I'll show you how to do this final round So once you've done four rounds of this motif, then we'll do this final round different. So we have the proper stitch count for the granny square panels to fit onto this round shape. Now I'm not going to unravel all of this because it took me a lot to figure out the stitch count to get this right. So what you would do is you'll join on, and this one I'm using the indigo color. You join on with a chain three, and join on behind a cluster of four double crochets. So join between a cluster of four and three double crochets. So join on, do a chain three, and then you'll do four more double crochets into the chain two space for a cluster of five. And then there's no chain in between. You just go into the middle stitch of the three double crochet cluster and do a double crochet. And then go over to the next chain two space and do five double crochets. And then you go over to the cluster of four double crochets and into the middle, you'll do a double crochet. So I'll just finish going around here, showing you the stitch pattern. So pretending you're joining on, you pretend this is a chain three, which would count as your first double crochet. And then you'll do four more double crochets for a total of five double crochets for this first cluster you know if you were joining on at the beginning so that is four total that's five in total and there's no chain you just go into the middle stitch of the cluster of three double crochets with one double crochet and you're going under both loops of that double crochet from the previous row and then go into the next chain two space and do a set of five double crochets into this chain two space. And that's four. And one more is five. And then into the middle stitch of your cluster of four double crochets, you'll do a double crochet. And then over to the next chain two space, you'll do a set of five double crochets. So I'll just go forward to the end here and show you how we'll finish off. So I'm just finishing up my last set of five double crochets into the chain two space. And you should finish off just with a one double crochet in the middle of a cluster of four. And then we'll just fasten off and we'll do the invisible finish. Now it's going to be hard to see because this yarn color is so dark, but if you've seen the tutorial on the granny squares, I will have shown you how to do that. So you're counting up your three chains and then going into the stitch just behind that third chain. So your stitch will lane on top of the third chain you'll just pull that and make this mock stitch to lay on top of that third chain and then you bring the needle down into the V of the stitch pre behind that pick up a bit of yarn from the back snug that up and this does show better in the other videos because this color is so dark and then you just want to darn in your tail end and make that nice and snug and I would come back in the other direction, but you get what I mean. So that is the circle motif for the bottom of the bag. Now, once you have all your squares crocheted up and all your tails darned in, you can either hand steam or block your squares so they have a nice uniform shape. And the next step is we are going to sew two strips so we'll be sewing these seams together here. So, 
and two strips of five squares and then we'll join the two squares or the two strips together. I'm just going to use a whip stitch. I really like how it looks. You can use any joining technique that you like. It's totally up to you, but I'll show you how to do the whip stitch next. All right. So to do the whip stitch, you want to cut a piece of yarn that is two lengths plus an extra length for the tail. And you put that on your darning needle. And I like to work into the back of the motifs so you can flip your motifs over. And you'll be, you have this chain one in the chain one space in the corner of each square. So that's the stitch that you'll join into. So I'm going to come in from the front of the chain one here and then go in from the back to the front of the chain one and just into the top loop only. I'm not going into both stitches of the motif. I'm just picking up the top loop only and you can leave a bit of a tail there to darn in and then coming in from the bottom motif you go under that stitch there and pick up the stitch of the other motif and just snug that up. And then again, coming to the bottom motif, pick up the stitch, there's the top loop only, and picking up the top loop of the next stitch. And it's that simple. And this creates a really pretty finish. I really love the way this whip stitching just into the top loop looks. So you'll just stitch this all the way along until you get to the end. So I will see you there. And here we are. So coming to the end of the squares here, I've just done my last stitch and here's the chain one and the chain one on the other motif. And there you go. And then you just sort of pull that out and even the edges out. And then you can just darn your tail end into the back here. And I like to go in one direction and come back in the other direction. And you will be creating a bit of a, a little stitch here, a loop here. And this is this will be used when you're joining the other squares together in the intersection to uh, join them together. So here I'll come back in the other direction and straighten that out, pull that out flat snip that off so you have a bit of a loop there and you can darn this in in the same way and you can see how that is such a lovely join it's nice and flat with a nice little ridge to frame the squares and you do have that uh, extra stitch when you're joining the uh, other squares together so go ahead and join the five squares together in make two panels of five squares each and then i'll show you how to do the long edge and join at the intersection. And once you have your two panels of squares joined together, you're going to then do one seam right along the long edge there. So just measure your yarn two lengths of that seam plus a piece about this long for your tail ends. So you can join on as before. I actually started by darning in my tail end here and you'll do the whip stitch as usual. And once you get to your intersection, what, what you'll have is you'll have your chain one from each corner of each square, but you'll also have that stitch from the seam here. And you wanna pick up that stitch as well. And then continue sewing along, uh, just making sure to pick up that intersection stitch and now going into the chain one of the next squares and going into the top loop only. Um, and again, you can join any way you like. I just like the way this whip stitch looks and just stitch that all the way along until you're done. Then once you have your panels all sewn together, you can use this as a template to make the lining for the bag. So I'm using this denim fabric 
and this fabric happens to be white on the one side and the denim color on the other side. So for me, I have to decide which color I want to face out. So when I put the fabric under the, the bag here, this is what would be facing out. The denim actually looks quite nice. If I put the white side facing out, I don't think it looks very good at all. So I'll put the white side of the fabric facing inside the bag and the denim color will be uh, facing the outside. So using your motifs as a template, you will just measure a half inch circumference all the way around for a seam allowance. And for this motif, you're measuring sort of at the widest point, it goes in and out, so at the widest point. And so for the round one, it's seven and a half inches in diameter or 24 inches in circumference. So that's that piece. And then this piece here is you're going to add a half inch seam allowance on each side and on the bottom of the hem. And then we're actually going to be crocheting a two inch band across the top. So you'll add two inches to that as well. So this panel is eight and a half inches high plus two inches for the band. Plus you wanna add one inch for the top hem and then including that half inch seam allowance for the bottom, you'll have a total of a 12 inch panel. So 12 inches this way, and that's what I've measured here. So it's, this panel is 12 inches. And then for the length or the width, you'll measure to the widest part of the panel so this is just shy of 23 inches. So I'll add a half inch uh, for each side. That will make the panel 24 inches. Now your measurements might be a little bit different because it depends on your tension and the yarn that you use. But for me, this panel is 12 inches by 24 inches. And that's what I need for the lining. Now, if you like, you could make a pocket to go inside the bag. I'm not going to put a pocket in. I do show that in the tutorials that I talked about earlier for how to do uh, linings. I'm gonna be using the sewing machine to sew this together. And those tutorials I do have that shows how you can do hand stitching or sewing machine. And those will be in the blog post. So make sure to check that out. And so what we're going to do next, I'll, I'll talk about sewing the bag together after. What we're going to do now is we'll put right sides together and we'll do one final seam and make this into a tube by joining this one seam with the whip stitch. And then when you come back, we'll put the bottom on and we'll actually use a single crochet to join the bottom of the bag on. So go ahead and sew that seam and I'll show you how to crochet the bottom on and to put the band across the top. All right, so here the top part of the bag is created. All the seams are joined together. And for the circle motif, I actually had to add an extra row of single crochet around here for it to fit nicely. I, I put it on and the bottom buckled a little bit, so it just needed one more of single crochet to give the same stitch count. So you can uh, join on another color if you like. I joined on the blue jean color, joined it on with a single crochet and single crochet all the way around. You're not increasing the stitches or anything and just crocheting into the top loop only and finishing off with the invisible stitch. If you want, you could do this in the indigo color. Once you finish this round, you could chain one and do one more row of single crochet and that will make this diameter fit nicely into the bag. And it actually works fine still with the lining piece that I cut out. It's not quite a half inch, it's probably three eighths of a seam allowance, but that's okay, I'm just gonna use this. So now what we'll do is we'll crochet the bottom onto the top part of the bag. So I'm doing this in the blue jean color 
Uh, let me put on my glasses here. So you want to be crocheting wrong sides together. So the right side's facing out. And we'll start with a slip knot. Now you can join on your yarn any way you like. I'd like to do it like this. And we'll join on with a single crochet. So you can pick up any stitch on the round motif and going into the top loop only. You put the hook through the top loop of the round motif and have the round motif facing you. And then pick up a top loop into any stitch of the uh, top section. Here, I'll just put my yarn over to this side here. Have your tail to the right, grab your yarn from behind, flip your tail over, You'll have two loops on your hook and you'll do a single crochet. So just joining on with a single crochet. Then you go into the next stitch, top loop only from both sections and do a single crochet. So pick up a stitch from each section going into the top loop of each stitch. You'll single crochet the round motif onto the bag section. Now the round motif has 71 stitches all the way around and the bag has 70 stitches all the way around. But you have these extra stitches in the seams so you can pick up one of those stitches to make up. So here we are, we're at the seam and I just want to show you this. So here we have the chain one from this square here and the chain one from this square here and in between there is this seam and you don't want to crochet into that uh, intersection seam you want to skip over and go right into that the stitch from the chain one space of your granny square because if you crochet into those seam stitches, you'd end up with a total of 75 stitches all the way around and you'd have too many. So you'll just crochet into the actual stitch of each granny square motif, except you will need to pick up one of those seam stitches to balance out the, the stitch numbers all the way around. So yeah, so just crochet all the way around, doing a single crochet into the top loop of each stitch, skipping that seam stitch in between all the motifs except for one. So go ahead and do that and I'll see you at the end of this round. All right, so coming to the end of joining these two sections together, I just have four stitches left. And I did pick up the stitch from this seam here to keep my stitch count accurate. And so just finishing up these last few stitches here. And there we go. There's the last single crochet and we'll use that invisible join. Uh, I like to use that. It just makes a really nice, neat finish. So and again, I have a tutorial on how to do these invisible joins in the blog post. And so what you want to do is you want to get this tail into the center of the bag. And here we go. I'll use the crochet hook for that. And just grab this and pull this down into the center of the bag. There we go. and you can darn that into the center of the bag and then you'll just bring your needle in from behind into that beginning single crochet and you'll make that mock stitch that invisible stitch and then you're coming down into the v stitch of the stitch behind it picking up a loop in the on the other side and in this case I'm just going to run the stitch to the inside of the bag and darn it in on the inside of the bag. So I'll just bring that in and I won't actually show you how to darn it in, but there you go. You have that nice join. So that's that part of the bag and you can just steam this flat. Uh, I really like a hand steamer. It works really good for that. 
So that's the bottom of the bag joined. Now we're going to do a band around the top and I'll show you how to do that next. Great. So now we're going to do a row of single crochet across the top of the bag and we're going to work with the bright navy. Of course, you can use any color combination you'd like, but I'm going to do bright navy, indigo, the denim blue or the blue jean, indigo, and then bright navy. So there'll be five rows all together. So you can join on into any stitch that you like. And I'm just going to join before an intersection here and join on with a single crochet and going into the top loop of the stitch. And so then you're just going to single crochet into the top loop of each stitch all the way around. And in this case, you are going to crochet into the stitch in the seam. So you get that chain one space and then here's the joining seam stitch. You'll crochet into that and then the, the chain one from the next uh, granny square and so making sure to pick up that seam stitch there. So go ahead and do a row of single crochet in the bright navy and fasten off with the invisible finish. There we go. So I darned in the tail ends as well. Now we're going to join on with the indigo color and again just join in anywhere into a top loop of a single crochet anywhere you like and you'll join on with a single crochet just as before and then you'll just do a round of single crochet into the top loop all the way around and this time you're crocheting into single crochets only so go ahead and do a second round of single crochet in the indigo color and then you'll fasten it off just as before with the invisible stitch and then I'll see you for round three. Now for this round we're going to create the part of the band where the drawstring goes into. So what you want to do is lay your bag nice and flat and because there's five squares there's no real center of the bag. So one side will look like this and the other side the squares will be in the center. So you can gauge that as best as you can and what you want to do is you want to find the center stitch on each on each side. So you can't see very well. The stitch turns a corner here. So there's one here and one there. So put a stitch marker on the stitch facing you for that side. And then on this side, it's the same. So stitch there and stitch there. And so put a marker on the opposite side. And so you, that's marking the center sides of your bag. Then the next step is here. I'll start on this side here. Then you want to take another stitch marker and you're going to count back a stitch. So skip a stitch and into the stitch behind that you can put another stitch marker. Or you can use safety pins if you like. It's totally up to you. And so then you'll create a slip knot and we're going to join on uh, with the blue jean color and just start a few stitches before and joining into the top loop and this time we're going to join on with a slip stitch. So just flip your tail over and pull the yarn through. There we go and snug that up. Again working into the top loop only and you'll do a chain three and this counts as your first double crochet. And then you'll do a double crochet into the top loop of each stitch all the way along, except for when we get to the markers. I'll show you what we'll do there. So just one double crochet into the top loop of each stitch. And, and then just as you approach this yellow stitch marker, 
this is going to be a space. So you're going to skip this space. So you'll do a chain one, you'll skip that stitch marker, and then going into the stitch behind that one, you'll do one double crochet. Oops, come on. There we go. And then a double crochet into that center stitch. And then your center side and then a third double crochet into the next stitch. So you're doing three double crochets in a row. Then you'll do a chain one, skip a stitch and do a double crochet in the next stitch. Then you'll carry on doing double crochets all the way around the bag until you get to the other side. And what this is doing is it's creating little openings for the straps to go through. So once you've done that, you can pull this little stitch marker out. You're gonna work your way around and when you get to this side, you'll do the same thing. Skip a stitch, put the stitch marker in the stitch before that. You'll crochet your double crochets. Once you get here, you'll chain one, skip the stitch where the yellow marker is, do three double crochets, chain one, skip a stitch, and carry on with your double crochets all the way around. And then you'll join this side with your invisible stitch as before. So we'll see you there. Wonderful. So here I am at the end of this round and I just wanted to review this. I'm not sure if I've shown you this before. So you have your beginning chain three and then when you join for a taller stitch, you wanna go into the stitch behind the chain three I know I've shown this before, but my memory doesn't <laughs> work very well. So you just lay that stitch on top of the chain three and you're going down into the V stitch and picking up a stitch from behind. And with this taller stitch, sometimes what I like to do, depending on the pattern, I like to join that gap together a little bit more secure. So I'll bring the uh, needle into the chain three and then come back into the double crochet. So I just do a little stitch back and forth like that and that just creates a nice little finish there. So I'll go ahead and darn in those tail ends and so that is the round three and the openings for the drawstrings for the straps. So now you're going to do two more rows of single crochet. So you go in the reverse colors. So you'll join on with a row of single crochet in the indigo color and join on anywhere you like. And when you get into these chain one spaces, make sure you do a single crochet into that chain one and carry on and do another row with the bright navy. So go ahead and do two more rows of single crochet and I'll see you when that's done. All right, so here is the crochet part of this granny square bag all done and the band and the little openings for the drawstrings and a couple more rows of crochet above that. I've darned in all my tail ends. So the next step is to do the lining. So this is the end of part one. And in part two, we will do the lining, the drawstrings and finishing touches. So we'll see you there. Mm -hmm.